Hey, what's up guys? This is Steel Rain and welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be looking at the Foxair Predator Micro and the Cadex Turbo Micro SDR1. Now these are both pretty new and exciting cameras to hit the market just because the features that are packed in them and their small size. So what we're going to go ahead and do real quick is kind of compare them side by side, their feature sets and what they have to offer. So first off, the the uh, Foxeer Predator Micro comes in roughly around $36.90 and has a CMOS uh, sensor with no jello, they claim. They didn't quite list the sensor. Uh, the Cadex over here comes in roughly around $34.99, CMOS sensor as well, and has a 1 and 2 eighths inch Sony Exmor R Starvis sensor. And I think. The Fox here has the same sensor, they just don't has it, have it listed. So second of all, we're going to get to the size. The Fox Air uh, is 18.6 by 19 millimeters, whereas the uh, Cadex over here is 19 by 9. The Fox here comes in black, red, and blue coloring uh, to your choice. And of course, the uh, Cadex uh, comes in yellow, green, and pink. And I guess they're, they're just trying to add new colors you know, to offset them or make them unique from some other cameras out there. So, uh, so uh, we'll get to the next one, which is the Fox here is 5.5 grams listed by them. The Cadex is around 5.4 grams. They both uh, have super wide dynamic range as claimed by the manufacturers. The Fox here says it's a uh, 1,000 TV line resolution, whereas the Cadex is claiming 1,200 TV line resolution. They both could handle 5 to 40 volts of DC input, so that's a pretty wide range of input for both of these cameras. They're pretty much going to handle, you know, from a 2S all the way up to a 6S, possibly higher, you know, depending on voltage spikes, but that's a pretty wide range for DC input. Uh, Fox here claims 4 milliseconds latency on this camera at its minimum, uh, according to their website, which is pretty... Pretty great. I mean, I, I haven't seen that low latency uh, yet, but I've seen some other guys that have done some latency tests on this camera, and it's averaging somewhere between 10 and 15 milliseconds, which is still outstanding. Uh, nothing listed for the Cadex, and I haven't seen anybody test its latency yet, at, le at least not on this uh, new Turbo Micro SDR1. So next we'll get to uh, the Fox here, the aspect ratio. 4x3 only at this time with a 150 degree field of view and it has an M8 lens and uh, over here this one has a bit more features the Cadex it is a switchable PAL and NTSC it's also switchable in the menu to 4x3 and 16x9 so that gives it you know it's a, it's a little bit more um, I guess you'd say modular it can move move around basically to the user preference uh, no field of view listed for the camera but we'll see that when I go around and we'll get some uh, get some footage here in a bit uh, next feature is the Fox ear has a built-in OSD so basically you'll have your pilot name uh, your voltage and a and a timer that comes on now I know a lot of guys don't really use those if they have a Betaflight OSD or you know an external OSD but some people do like to have it especially for micro builds where an OSD isn't on their, their micro flight controller or it's not really feasible. Whereas the Cadex has no OSD at all. So you're going to need some sort of OSD for this camera to work if you want to see your voltage, your timer, or any of that stuff. Um, like you said, 1.8 millimeter lens on this one was the only option. And the only option I've seen so far on this one is a 2.1 millimeter lens, but on the box, it, it gives different options, but I haven't seen any purchase options other than a 2.1 millimeter lens on this camera so far. So the Fox here features a um, horizontal and vertical flip and you could do both at the same time whereas the Cadex has none so that's you know that's something else you have to consider when purchasing one of these cameras. If you really need something that's you know you need to mount your uh, camera upside down or you know flip it somehow because of the connector on the back you know, it's a big consideration. So, uh, the Fox here is seven language compatible, and the Cadex is eight language compatible. 
the Caddx beats it out because it does have uh, Russian, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, not listed again for the Fox here that I couldn't find was its, its illumination level where the illumination on the Caddx is 0 .0001 lux. And it says it's good for starlight. So we're going to be testing that also, uh, you know, with low light and in the dark. And neither one of these have microphones on them. So that's something else to consider. No built-in mics. So hopefully your VTX has a has a microphone if you like to hear your props, your motors, and all that stuff. Uh, if not, you're going to have to run an external uh, microphone. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the back here real quick. Go ahead and zoom in there. Hopefully you can see that. So it's got a few options on the back. As you can see all the way to the left, there's voltage in, ground, then there's the video wire, the OSD wire, and the VSIN wire. The VSIN wire is a uh, addition which ba basically you run it straight to your battery power and on its OSD it'll show up what your battery voltage is on the uh, built-in OSD for this for this micro camera. So one, it's just one connector. Like I said, I'm not going to be doing an unboxing of these because it's just the same basic usual stuff. Uh, they both come with uh, micro brackets, you know, and the wiring harnesses, uh, some mounting hardware for the brackets, and they both come with pretty clunky uh, OSD dongles, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, Runcam does do a lot better job, uh, you know, in that sense. So we're going to look at the back here of this one. And as you can see, there's really not too many options. 5 to 40 volt input, ground, uh, you got your video wire and your OSD. And once again, the battery, uh, the wiring harness that comes out of this camera pretty much comes out. You attach it to your battery and it's got um, a long lead for the OSD dongle uh, where you just plug the OSD dongle right into it and you can change some of its settings. This one here has just got a short little lead that comes out of the back with a shared ground with the main ground. So you can plug in your OSD and all that stuff. So pretty much with that, guys, that's pretty much all the features that I could find uh, listed for these two cameras so far. So what we're going to go ahead and do is cut away and we'll go ahead and, and get some uh, some video footage of these two cameras side by side.
Well, there you go, guys. There's my review of the Caddx and the Fox here. And I'll let you guys go ahead and make up your uh, minds. As you just saw, the daytime, the uh, sunset with some cloudiness, uh, along with some, some nighttime footage from both of these cameras. And personally, just as a disclosure, those were stock settings. And I'm going to tell you right now, I believe the Caddx was a clear winner uh, overall just in daytime and sunset, the cloudy features, whereas the Fox Ear did a lot better at night. Now, the Fox Ear to me seemed kind of washed out, muddy, a little bit, little bit dark, but it didn't have any fisheye. It seemed like a more normal aspect ratio, didn't have any of that fisheye effect. It also had a lot of aliasing and that shimmeriness in the video that just isn't an option. You can't adjust the gain at all in the settings. You have saturation, contrast, hue, uh, color, a couple other things, but I couldn't find anything to get rid of that shimmeriness. But um, I think a lot of that has to do with the DVR kind of downgrading the image. It does look a lot worse in the DVR than it does, uh, you know, through the goggles. So uh, overall, I think the Fox here did, did decent. I'm going to try to adjust some of its settings to try to get it a, be a better picture and then update you guys here in the future. Now the Caddx, if you guys saw, had a lot more fisheye effect to it. Still not sure if it's the lens. I believe it's most likely the lens on it. But the colors just seemed a lot more warm and, and natural to me. It seemed like it had better resolution. It is a little bit higher resolution camera, so that possibly could have something to do with it. But it did have fisheye effect. Now, where it lost out was the nighttime that you guys saw. There was a lot of a lot of aliasing and, and um, just shimmeriness going on in the video, which I'm sure that could be fixed in its settings as well. It's just not set up for that stock settings. But I want to keep this, you know, apples to apples, uh, just straight stock settings out of the box to see how these two would do. And um, personally for me, the clear winner is the Caddx for daytime and uh, sunset and cloudy type conditions where, of course, you know, the Fox Ear to me beat it out for nights. So it might just be that this one's set up better for nights and this one's settings just came out of the box way better for day and cloudy settings and it just failed at night. So I'm going to be messing with both these cameras and um, if you guys know any good settings for these, go ahead and leave me a link or some comments down in the description. And uh, that's pretty much going to be it, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video, learned something about these two cameras. Uh, pretty exciting to have both of these. I'm going to be trying them out on a few builds and uh, one on a micro build and one on a full-size racer. And see where we go from there, start messing with some of their settings. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And as always, please leave any comments, questions, or suggestions down in the normal place below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.